my pause happens every day sometimes it's a blessing to be have to have nothing my goal is to be happy i was a very black and white kid growing up don't take everyone's advice I'm, a, I'm an obsessive person and my hack for staying obsessive was healthy obsessions. Can my mm. clothes not have to speak for me? Can I speak mm. for myself? Who I am on the inside, I think, was always special. Who you want to be and being that person is a journey of patience. Vedant Lamba has wanted to be an entrepreneur from even before most of us even tried to learn how to ride a cycle. And he's also someone who's supremely passionate about what he does, but also about how he projects all of that inside himself and really dig into his own mindset. So we're going to tap into all of that and more on this episode. But before we go there, I want to make sure you hit subscribe and smash that bell icon. I'll see you in the chat with Vedant. Welcome to the show, man. I'm Thank happy you. we're doing this. This is uh, We're finally doing this in person. The last time we did this was on last year on Advertising is Dead. I yeah. think we did online. Yes. Um, you with your nice AirPods Max and which uh, screwed up the audio. You know, <laughs> how's that? Would be cool. All that <laughs> screwed up the. And this time, no headphones. <laughs> whenever you and I've spoken, and and, and whenever we we've, we've kind of like had longer conversations, what's always struck me is that you have a sense of clarity when you speak about anything, and that seems to be very inherently a part of your thing. Um, is, do you look at yourself as someone who's very clear about what you're doing and where you want to go? And has that always been the case? See, it's um, it's fairly nuanced, right? On one side of life, I have deep clarity. On another side, I'm like ridiculously messed up. And like, you know, there's just none of it. Uh, and I'm always finding it. I feel like my strength lies in that clarity of, I know big picture what I want to do, where I want to go constantly. And I've run that exercise so many times. Right? It's just a process of like reiteration from from when I was as young as maybe 10 years old. It was, oh, skateboards are cool because I saw them on TV. Mm. But there's no skateboards in India. Mm. Maybe I could buy a skateboard next time I'm on vacation with my family, come back, get a guy to learn how it works, start training kids, build this empire of like, you know, skateboard schools. And, and I've done this exercise, I don't know how many times that slow and steady, I got to joust verbally with, you know, it was in my head, then it was with my father. It was a lot with my father. Granted, it's still today with my father. Mm -hmm. But then I started going out to people who've done relevant things, maybe someone who built a sports school, and then it was people who've built different businesses, and then it was with you, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, you know, this journey has been so rewarding to be constantly doing this exercise, but discovering sooner what doesn't work and what works. Bases evidence, bases proof. So I think I've gotten better at that. You give me a direction, and I can scope out a roadmap for where this goes into being like a gazillion dollar business because that's what I care about. At least I think that's what it can be. So, you know, I've had ideas also since when I was much younger, maybe 14, 15, 16, that have gone on to be big business that other people have built. Because, mm. you know, you're always like, oh, if this is really that good of an idea. Why is no one else doing it? Very important question to answer. And then eventually people did it and they I killed it. And because there were smarter people than I was. And it's nice to see that. It was like, oh, my ideas were, you know, they had some merit to them. Um, and yeah, I think that clarity of roadmap comes from there uh, and then there's the other side of things where I'm learning and you know it's getting better and uh, yeah I think self-awareness is definitely one of my um, strengths comparative to my other like you know uh, skill sets in life I don't know if I'm objectively no, like, really uh, good at it but uh, I've heard when, when I'm hearing what you're saying and, and, and you mentioned self-awareness right and that's one of the things which I feel most people struggle with is that your awareness of your own self often comes from what other people are telling you about yourself. Um, you are less, I mean, you're not hearing your own voice as much as you're hearing everybody else's. So when, when you kind of think back on yourself when you were, I mean, you said, you, considering the fact that you had entrepreneur ideas when you were 14. Earlier, earlier, I was earlier than 14. 10. I, 12, I remember I being 8, 9, 10 thinking about the skateboard idea. It was my first empire to build, you know, I, it was a, like, I distinctly remember thinking about it. I don't know why it happened. I don't know. Why, why did that fascinate you so much? I, mean, I want to really dig into that a little bit. I think I, 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 I attribute a lot of this to my father. He, um, you know, my parents, I grew up in a lot of privilege, but today, you know, my um, clarity on what my greatest privilege was, was faith. And they really gave me this like infinite belief that I could do anything. And I believed that they believed that I could do anything. It was like the world is at my feet. Until today, I feel like it. And when I meet people who even remotely, they're like, oh, how could I? Like, And my immediate thing is, but you can do anything. It's like, you understand, you have 
everything around you you wherever you are in life you know in fact sometimes it's a blessing to be have to have nothing i have this faith in myself and the world that anybody can do anything because of my parents i think that's where it comes from mm. yeah. so it really just gave me that you know, i remember seeing some of your and you vlogged for a long time yeah um yeah. and i remember looking at some of those older videos <laughs> and your father I, this one particular video i think it was your father's birthday there was one video made a film for his birthday made a film so for his birthday this is what i want to be when i grow up and i remember that one oh wow i don't know you've seen this um <laughs> uh, and tell me about your relationship with your father i, I think most of i mean and, and, and i say this often because i've realized this in therapy myself is that most of what we are is it comes from who how our childhood was and what inherently started there and because you mentioned it i'd love to hear more about your relationship with your father it's um you know relationships have always been great he's been unnecessarily unreasonably supportive through everything right my dad's a he's a phd he's well respected as an academic he's an author all of that uh, and you know i haven't passed 12th grade i'm technically 10th grade pass and he had strong ambition for me from mm. day one in a very non toxic manner mm. it was always like yo you have the potential to be first in your class why are you not studying better mm. and now i'm realizing now why i didn't you know there are other related issues and he didn't like it was never mm. toxic mm. it was great but then on the flip side of things there was an inherent pressure that i felt just looking at him be this calm secure individual who had same routine since i can remember as wherever we are in the world if we're on vacation or he's at work man is up at the same time doing the exact same thing every day and it's so because of my own issues it was always scary to me it's like i can't do this is no way i could do this and today i'm coming into it slow and steady i'm discovering wow i can be like him and it's making me happy you know i'm doing a few things every day and in a healthy manner now after approaching it in an unhealthy manner several times several times as well and i'm coming into that but yeah like i told you man i can't think of any other reason for where i am today uh, you know which is happy which is mm. happy on a journey that it is it's a time in my life i'm living the dream and it's all thanks to my parents you know mom and, dad both and we think about that point of time let's say when you were 10 12 to when you eventually started started a business became an entrepreneur talk about that time when you actually did start did it feel like it was not what you thought it was or was it everything you thought it was and and did the way you looked at it from a headspace kind of change yeah. over time you know i was um it's my first technical like business activity i think i was 13 or 14 maybe i had started i convinced my parents to buy a dslr saying we'll get damn good photos you know on vacation and all um till today they make fun of me about like if i take a photo they're never going to get it <laughs> but i just i was a geek i just wanted equipment around me i loved tech so i started taking photos and then i would tell people i can take photos for them for money in my head at that time also i could do anything so anyone said anything i would see yes i can do it then i'll go figure it out mm. so i like, can you shoot photos for you know makeup artists can you shoot like a portfolio for me of course i can shoot a portfolio then i'll go figure out okay i can rent lights and i'll charge 10000 rupees okay i'll make so much off of that okay cool um and i was extremely naive and i have trouble focusing because my mind is all over the place i am high chance i'm somewhere on this add spectrum if not actually mm-hmm. you know have add or adhd i'm actually getting diagnosed tomorrow oh nice um i just filled a form I got, on the i'm way saying here. nice also because i got diagnosed 5 years ago and i don't have it i have autonomy but i'm yeah. good, good so i'm going and doing so the because test. of this lack of my ability to focus is why i couldn't study properly is because i developed issues with this fear of not being able to do you know what my dad is doing is routine i'm discovering all this now and it's great to, you know identify problems So because of my lack of focus I do one thing 100 100 thing I constantly moving forward as a result my feedback loop was very short I was constantly reiterating I was learning from mistakes I was making more mistakes I was making a lot of mistakes was, it's a lot of mistakes going up so I didn't ever think oh it's different it was always oh, of course this is the business hmm. day one I was like oh, of course I can do anything uh then I slowly started realizing okay I really can't do much I got to learn how to do a lot of things hmm. so that I started learning and you know I got slapped in the face a lot and it was great It was great to get slapped in the face, you know. Yeah. It was great to be like, "Oh wow, my problems are so big now." Can yeah. you imagine? It's like, "Oh shit!" Like two years ago, I can't imagine that I'd have like a deep requirement to make a ten lakh payment today, and that that would sound so unreal. And today, it's like, "Oh, it came and went." It's like, "Wow, hmm. that's crazy." Yeah. You know, we are we're talking like big numbers now. Problems are so big. Like, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? And that what you just said, right, is something which we don't talk about enough about being an entrepreneur. is you expect it to be this 
large scale thing which you kind of like build out but it's the smaller things of realizing that like when you said this at at thing back on when rohit and i first started we were asked saying uh, do you need to get a service tax certificate because at that point time gst wasn't a thing and you only need to get a service tax number if you were going to bill more than 12 when, lakhs in a year you like we won't make that much yeah it's okay we don't have to get it but you said we'll get it anyway I mean, it a lot more than I think we 10x that in year one, oh, right? Wow! Um, and you're like, what? Hell like, yeah! And so it's it's a for something different here. I'm talking debt. You're talking. <laughs> you made extra money. The different yeah. problems. No, but we had debt as well. Don't try to stoop to my level. No, we had debt as well. But no, the thing is, this is that it's it's the realization of those are the brass, I mean, b- base level um, entrepreneur things that. people don't talk about what we talk about mm-hmm. is oh let's build a va- let's you know build valuation build a business ah. plan no it's the actual sitting down it's the debt is the credit yes. handling oh, people shit. yeah gst handling a team handling oh my god so hard so which hard. brings me to since you said oh my god um and you and i have had conversations on this many times one is to become an entrepreneur the other thing is to suddenly have people who are working with you towards what you want to do keeping them motivated keeping them on the same kind of focus that you want them to be on um yeah. how has that been how 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 that's is that that's actually my um, it's my single skill set so i can take somebody and sell them a vision and make them a part of it and make them feel like you know they can do anything and because i believe it it's honest it's authentic if i could go back and change you know like people have asked me this and i was like nothing it's usually i don't have an answer but now i do So I didn't know how to hire. I didn't know how deep of a world it is. Over the last few weeks and months, in fact, I've been learning this. And again, I'm happy that I've identified it as a problem because the problem I identified is half solved. And I'm getting to the depths of how to interview people and how to find the right people. And I'm just going ham, discovering that oh, I can't do anything except I think train people to build like mm-hmm. operations, yeah. <laughs> maybe. And it's not worth my time to learn that. You know, I need to continue talking to you about. where this is going and how this is and what you learned on your bit you need to find people who've done similar activities elsewhere and i need people who can empower me mm. it was a very arrogant thought of me being able to empower people mm. and while i might have you know um made some excellent relationships and you know deep bonds with people who would maybe take a bullet for us as a brand uh i might have done a disservice to them by introducing them to a role that might not be right for them mm. and it was my fault Mm. and i've accepted it i've taken accountability for it i've messaged ex employees apologizing i'm like you know i think you should have left much earlier i think it's my my fault that i was scared to lose you that i felt like i was dependent that's my bad and mm. i'm sorry um i think all of this is part of a process and everybody has their own mistakes and i've made these and i'm okay with it so you know the motivation bit was not hard to do but it's still my strength mm. uh what is hard was to learn who to hire for what and now that i have that clarity i'm you know there's also fear built from that pressure that oh, i can't afford good hmm. and all of that and so now i'm I'm on it i'm chasing it this this next fun days is getting us closer do you feel that. like you're very hard on yourself it's a mix right this this last couple of years we scaled in a we scaled very fast in a complete lockdown with me and a 19 year old intern hmm um didn't know how to handle it right didn't know how to stabilize an operation from there we hired very quick fired quick gave oh it was very soon there was a lot of pressure and i just went with it i'm the kind of person who you know from the same things that we discussed about since i was a kid i would immediately shut down hmm. and anxiety pressure make me shut shut down i'd be like okay just like okay as long as it's moving forward i'd distract so while i am hard i'm also too lax and i'm getting over that right now it's not like stress is gone but i've spent time over the last few months healing from the pressure that i built onto my head trying to do 100 things at the same time all in a rush to now just coming down and achieving taking a pause achieving one thing at a time not being in a rush realizing there's no real rush mm. i have my whole life ahead of me yeah. um and you know that is making me more easy and also go harder on myself mm. i'm able to face the facts sooner yeah rather than wait for things to get real bad you know i made some really bad mistakes and i think it's okay I've I've I really screwed my head up over the last year and a half. I damaged myself badly and I'm not realizing it. And that meant taking a lot of hard decisions including uh you know ending a relationship 
including changing plans including you know a lot of things that i've normally been scared to do hmm including you know all of that accepting more failures accepting accepting where we stand uh, and i'm really glad net net there is progress you know there's ups and downs but net net yeah. progress is being made and i'm very 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 happy thank you for sharing that but and and, and i'm saying thank you because it's not easy to share the stuff that is downhill yeah it's very easy to share the stuff that yeah. goes uphill yeah i i don't mean to take there's a lot of uphill happening also <laughs> you know i should in your already. head in your head i would say i'm living in this downhill i feel all the downhill yeah. you've spoken about is mental yeah a lot of it is all problems i've created for myself none yeah. of it was real yeah which is why you're such an interesting mixture of things right? uh, on one end you have tremendous self belief on the other end you are also supremely hard on yourself you are so clear and sharp about business and like at 10 years old i don't think in, i do we very few people who think of building a business at 10 you are one of those people i didn't do it though so everybody can think you of had it. the idea <laughs> most of us are not even thinking of the idea of starting a business at 10 right um and the more i speak to you i've realized that it's like you're working towards something there is there is a certain goal in your head yeah. it might not be one singular goal but it's something you're kind of working towards yeah there's a plan there's a plan there's does a big, that is a big scale plan does that add a lot of pressure on you mentally yes and and, and, no. and have you found ways to kind of work with it yeah i'm battling right now with that right or oh, maybe i'm not going to be elon musk one day you know when i say elon musk is just a symbol for that size mm. of like impact yeah right, right now you don't want to say <laughs> Yeah, yeah whatever. maybe not the best example. No, I right? wouldn't mind that. Yeah, I'm. I would love to be buying Twitter for fun and you know screwing it up. Like hell yeah, if I can <laughs> afford that, I am cool with the controversy that comes with it. You know, by all means, hell yeah, I'll take that any day of the week. You yeah. know, sorry, Bella Hadid, no more Twitter for you. It's mine now. <laughs> you know, I'm that kid. I'm Mera bat hai, mehi khel. It's like fine. You leave, go home. I'm okay with it. But uh, that being said, yeah, I'm. I'm now battling to grasp that my goal is to be happy. Mm. And that happiness could come at 10 crores, 100 crores, 1000 crores, 10000 crores, 100000 crores. Right now the clear ambition is you know there's nothing short of you know 10000 crores types that doesn't get me out of bed. It's mm. like oh I need to have a life where I know a very like deep philosophical sense it is I want to get money out of the way. Mm. I don't want I want to discover real joy in life where money plays no role in it. Hmm. I'm like oh it's so stupid that I want a Ferrari. I, I don't actually like I want to get out of the way. I know it's not going to give me joy. But hmm. I want to I don't want it to be there. I don't want to see a Ferrari and be like oh I see more of a Lambo but Ferrari is like you know the symbol for it. I don't want to look at a plane and be like oh I wish. I don't want it should not occupy any space in my head. I want to think problems and solutions. I want to have fun with it. Hmm. You know the idea people ask me what are you going to do if you you know sell the business the first thing i want to do is go live in a forest like mm. i've always wanted to you know be friends with animals and mm. and have a life with no technology around or anything of that sort just so you can build technology from scratch you know build a home build a shelter build a fireplace make a real fire all those things sound so fun to me so there's that and there's the other end is okay maybe you won't do that and maybe that's okay and accept that now so you can objectively chase a business to build it big without this illuminating abstract uh you know giant object of achievement mm. and you know someone the other day said something so simple to me in um so you're not defined by your achievements or defined by your value he first said you're not defined by achievements and as soon as he said that i was like wait what mm. <laughs> it's like what do you say it sounds like it should be the most obvious thing and i had to literally be like wait then what do you define by and he's like your values and i was like huh that's Hey, uh, you know, it should be normal. Yeah. <laughs> and then I spent the next couple of weeks telling this to everybody. <laughs> I, went, yeah. I was like, oh, you know, you're not actually defined by achievements. You're defined by values, man. And uh, and it it sent me, you know, it really sent me thinking. I was like, okay, so I'm grasping with all of this while trying to healthily work towards building what I'm building, and mm. you know, building it to a larger scale, and objectively choosing bigger problems to solve and things like that. That's where I'm at. What you just said about the let's get it out of the way so it's not in your head i have a slightly different take on that and i'll tell you what my take is um uh, so i've sold the company the expectation was that thing 
live in a uh, forest was <laughs> that you sell a company you build a business you gone from two people in an apartment to what a 5 700 people you know you 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 would expect yourself to feel emotional when you get the money didn't shit <laughs> What about to be honest about what <laughs> what everybody does and this is like a simple fact when you get money when you sell a company you take a screenshot <laughs> and then you and then you move on to the next you go to the next days yeah, work yeah, right yeah, yeah. um that is literally all i did i just took a screenshot and invested Sick. kept Can some for family <laughs> invested exactly like literally the same life from that moment onwards again um yeah. i kept saying okay at some point it's going to mean something and it didn't like i recently like it's more about Two three weeks since uh, I finally left Glitch, it was only when I announced that I was leaving. That's literally five years after selling the company. Oh wow! It's a when long journey. when I put up that one post, and a lot of ex employees started writing into me, saying things that they had experienced with me, which some of them which I don't even remember. Like that's when things. I felt it. I'm like one second. That is when I. This is going. Yeah. I mean, literally, I'm mean, this one story. I've, I've told too many times, but it literally hit me the most. Is there's a girl who worked with us for many years, and she wrote about how when she was an intern, and it was raining in Bombay, first time out of her home, out of Bangalore, when she was there. I got her, I think, Brasam uh, Vada for like just like make it feel like home. I don't recollect that, it's but that she remembers. <laughs> she remembers it. Like off a of bag, lo, you have rasam. <laughs> but she was missing it, She's and I was like, eating buddy. it. But she was missing. I it. eat normal food. <laughs> no, but she was excited I'm by like, it. Yeah. I, I know, could have gone a different way. Yeah, Varun could have gone a different way. Profiled. Thankfully, <laughs> I had hung out with her before, so I knew what she would like. Sorry to. Sorry no, but to it's play it like that. But, no, but I feel it, you. Yeah. But it's 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 that right? It's it's the feeling that you get when you say, "Okay, this is what it was for." Yeah, the smaller things, and the fact that yeah. people will say, "Okay, this is what it, companies help me in my career this way," or someone I, the number of people who met the people they got married to, etc. At work oh, was another one. Yeah, you did also, no? So Pooja and I, us meeting, getting married, and her coming on to glitch happened simultaneously. It was like almost oh, like a parallel track okay, that okay, happened okay, exactly. Okay. So that was an interesting. Um, it it just literally was a parallel track. Yeah, but it wasn't about as much as I believed that buying things might get them out of the way. It just made me want to buy more things. Correct. But the day I stopped buying things mm-hmm. is the day I actually felt happier. Yeah, no, I feel that I I I I I've, I've microdosed this feeling. Hmm. Um, and I I really like this. I like microdosing things these days. You know, I'm microdosing abstinence in my life right now by resisting smaller things through a day in order to build up. So I'm. I'm I'm an, I'm an obsessive person, and my hack for staying obsessive was healthy obsession. So you know, I've never consumed anything that I sh- can't be obsessed with. It's not always good. I've ended up being like you know addicted to chips or whatever, which is <laughs> it's not the worst. It's not heroin, but it's not great either, yeah. right? And in my low points, it's like it gets bad, but I'm fine now. Um, so I microdose this feeling of not buying, and that's also part of the insecurities I'm getting over right now. So last two years, I've not bought anything new. Hmm. Not bought new clothes. I got a few like plain T-shirts made for myself. New clothes made for myself. I sold one or two, three hype shoes. Because before that, it was a desire. I would see a nice pair of shoe, be like, like a really nice. Shoe. Oh, I didn't have a lot, but very rarely I would see a shoe that really It's hit that my itch, taste. Right. Which yeah. ends exactly after you buy from cart. You don't really enjoy the thing. Cart you was enjoy. Me tha. You, know, you enjoy. Much harder because after you enjoy. You enjoy <laughs> buying it, but yeah. after you bought it, it means nothing. Yeah. It's that yeah. momentary yeah. spike. And in. and my thing was. I'll get back to this eventually. Hmm. Abhi ke liye, you know, it'll be good for the story. Hmm. And it's not worth my headspace to hmm. worry about how to afford a pair of shoes. Hmm. You know, because these shoes are not cheap. When I go seventy grand, eighty grand for a pair of shoes, it's not worth my time right now. I shouldn't, and I should get over this. Surrounded by what I am, I should figure out a way to not be consumed. And I did. And. It's something I'm definitely like, you know. It's proved so functionally beneficial to me. I can travel with a backpack for six days. I have just wear the same thing, and I'm never looking underdressed or overdressed. Hmm. Everybody looks at me like, of course, and it's just decent looking clothes. Yeah. You know, it's fine. So this like getting over that itch, that want is so good. I never look at something like, oh shit, I want. I didn't feel it anymore. Hmm. It's just gone. I ne- I see a nice pair of shoes. Wow, there's a nice pair of shoes, but the thought of buying it is completely off the table. And that's incredible. I have like you know in my personal life my cash requirement is nothing, 
So when the business is stabbed, it all goes back in and I, uh, as a result, <laughs> I have nothing, but it's fine. It's so good to feel like lightweight like that. You know, my closet is so functionally like convenient. It's just it's a beautiful system at home. Yeah. I get to literally just resize. And, and then it also lines up with sustainability and it's good for the environment. But yeah, I feel you getting over that itch is um, very valuable. And also, it's, it's an interesting and a rather important step for someone like you because your business is pretty much selling stuff that is hype. Yeah. Stuff that yeah. is costing a certain amount of stuff that is something everybody wants. Yeah, like status symbols. Yeah. And my question is, can I be the status symbol? Can it be me? Can my hmm. clothes not have to speak for me? Can I speak hmm. for myself? Can my actions, my values speak for myself? And hmm. and I think this sort of like making myself, you know, figuratively naked. <laughs> everybody's looking at me, not ever wondering what I'm wearing. Yeah. Or it's never, oh, that's nice shoe. So he's probably a cool guy. It's, mm. I'm always wearing a pair of beat up Adidas shoes. So it's, you know, so people have to be friends with me for me. You know, you don't have an option only. Mm. You'll never be friends with me for anything else. Uh, or you'll never talk to me for anything else. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. I like that. I'm surrounded by a great bunch of individuals. And I'm very, very proud of being like, you know, associated with. And I've also seen you evolve. I've been, you and I have known each other for a few years. And I've seen you kind of evolve into this person yeah. who's, who's a gone minimal. Um, I also has said, okay, I don't need the, I don't think you ever need the fluff, but you've moved the fluff away yeah. in terms of just looking at what your focus areas are. Yeah. Has that gone also from made your, it? Gone from your DM requests <laughs> to your studio. <laughs> <laughs> and has that, has that changed you as an, as, as an entrepreneur? Has that changed Everything as someone who operates changed. a business? Everything has changed, but nothing has changed. Hmm. Does that make sense? You know, things are always changing, but also nothing's changing. Mm -hmm. I think there's parts of me that I want to hold on to. And there's parts of me that I'm learning are not important to hold on to. I was a very black and white kid growing up. I was super radical. You know, this 10-year-old entrepreneur drive was, was oh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, like, I'm going to build this giant thing. Everything I do is, you know, legendary. And, um, and I was like, you know, very radical. And it wasn't good. It was very toxic for people around me, friends, family. I was in an extremely toxic relationship at 18, you know. And and um, and that toxicity, in fact, helped me unlearn a lot of things. And, and then, you know, I lost some things that I thought I shouldn't have. And now I'm getting like, I'm, I'm getting back to being grossly like ambitious and believing that I am a star and you know owning it a little more that I am going to build like a giant business I'm going to be a big deal and like owning that but in a healthy manner like you know not being like oh how dare you say anything otherwise mm. but like I know it and being mm. secure and that it's for me to know and I can tell people without thinking oh I shouldn't say this I don't care it's mm. so, okay I know I'm I'm fine with that so you know like uh, the things keep changing but also things don't mm. A lot of things don't. Who I am on the inside, I think, was always special. And I'm holding on to that in some sense. And I'm building on that. I'm supplementing that with the right tools, with the right energy, you know, with the right physical activity, with, with all of that, with the right relationships, with the mm. right advice, with the right conversations. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy right now mm. in life, you know. Despite a lot of my stresses not really going away, I discovered a few months ago that there are milestones I'm waiting for in my head that would take it away, say a fundraise. Hmm. But if I didn't fix, you know, this mentality before, then it'll never go. Hmm. So it's in your most stressful times, you can detach. In the worst time at work, you can still be completely okay and feel fine and still know that, okay, some problem, nothing is futile. You know, one of my investors who's a close mentor, like, I asked, this is one of the most stressful times of my life. We were battling some legal trouble and it was the first time it happened to me you know i felt defeated i was down and i got covid in the middle of it on top of all that and i asked him i was like send me a few points and i was just understand and believe that nothing is ever futile like you know there will always it's always next At the end of the day just like believe if mm. you're a good person doing good things not done anything wrong relax everything will be fine you know, that, that really sat with me so i'm learning to do all of these things so these things are constantly evolving i would say maybe not changing but evolving mm better word i think i'm regularly evolving to better has that also changed how you look at relationships um just connecting other people how you interact with them what you expect from them has has that changed oh, as a well? lot i was a very insecure sensitive kid so it impacted my friendships and all that now it's a lot more chill sometimes i think it still comes out 
but it has improved my relationships with my friends so much you know i still have my closest friends from when i was a kid and i i only had one school experience right to the 10th grade so i don't have a chance to make friends in college and junior college and and work but you went straight to building a business because i went straight to you know really not going to college <laughs> i remember just building a business so i never made like that sort of like you know i feel like most people make a lot of deep relationships in force of environment which also happened to me in school for example i didn't have the chance to do that even and all of them did hmm. so you know i've see i've i've become friends with them <laughs> <laughs> you know so then also separating associates from friends i'm also like a person who's social but not really i don't have any habits that are socially like driving you know i've never and and sometimes this would in fact you know make me question my decisions is like oh wow i can never really grab a drink with someone no one will think of me to grab a drink because i've never had any alcohol hmm it's like i'm missing out on so much like nobody wants to drink with me hmm. which is fair but it's like okay am i missing out on building relationships there so naturally i'm not really like you know the objective figure of my being is not social hmm. so but i was you know socially keen i was keen to make friends and build mm. that so it took it took very like conscious effort mm. and i remember 2020 december and i i also made one of my resolutions is i'm going to build a social life in bombay i don't mm. have friends here i need to make real friends you know not just associate everybody was an associate after that are <laughs> like why am i not friends with someone who has nothing to do with my work yeah you know i should then i started doing that and luckily today you know i can i'm proud enough to say i have i know a bunch of really like incredible people you know who i can do like i can hmm. i can hang out with this part you know there's things to do it's it's good and i feel that connecting and building friendships building relationships in in, in today's world is also tricky right because yeah and especially when you're an adult like this is whole thing going on about can you build friendships as an adult without having a at the back end of it thinking of an agenda thinking of some form of leverage and even thinking of the fact that okay what will this kind of like lead to yeah and what you just said i think that's a great way to start saying can i find someone who has zero connection to my world or or what yeah. i actually doing so they're never going to be an associate i, I yeah. love that term but you just finding someone can i just like yeah. we fun to kind of hang yeah so i was so associate driven right i was so just work oriented and i never thought only to make friends and i looked around i was like wow i have no friends i'm so, and i was in this transitionary phase there was time earlier when i was moving pune to bombay so my pune friends didn't think i was there bombay friends i didn't have any it was a very like lonely period you know it was a very depressing time in my life also before like main street started like picking up a little bit when i was in a transition phase and i was just moving here and i've been through that and i've seen like you know the real struggle was our first year in bombay it was also one of the most fun years of my life hmm. but um a lot of that like gives you that perspective it's okay let's consciously build sort of those equations and the friendships and yada 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 if i had to ask you what your biggest fear was what would it be i don't know anymore i'm starting to try and insulate myself from you know that nothing is really bad mm. life is life kal ko i mean i don't know if i'm 35 and i've got a job with a glitch and you know my startup crash and burn and i'm you know if i'm doing decently well i have a family i like i have friends i like my parents are good it's fine mm. it's okay mm. things will change and i'll i hope to constantly strive for happiness mm. so i don't think i have a fear as such you know earlier it was like oh if i don't end up being a billionaire is my biggest fear but mm. i don't want it to be mm. maybe it still is somewhere but i don't want it to be you know nothing is so fixed i think beyond like as soon as i can probably fly a business of first i think i have like a want for like a certain amount of comfort around mm. me i think once i hit that i'll be good mm. you know decent car driver whatever of course the want is to have a ludicrous garage like <laughs> iron man or some shit and you know have my own iron man suit and my own plane and my own happy and all that like basically iron man but you know beyond that um i think it's a healthy way to chase that and maybe my goals will change i hope not hmm. i really hope not but maybe they will there's no reason to have any fears like that maybe fears will then tap into emotionally which is like okay there's family and friends and you know maybe those are now like objectively i think those are just fears that will hmm. really suck uh, aside from that nothing like career wise should should technically affect you like mm-hmm. that i would hope to stay healthy and my family and friends stay healthy and animals around me stay safe mm-hmm. and all that yeah that's it as, as i'm hearing you talk right there's there are few things that kind of come to mind and and i, and I feel those are super relevant as well is that you at no point you, you 
I noticed that you do two things. One is you experiment with a lot of things, like in the sense that you know, this with the wardrobe, right? Like, or your cold showers thing, which you still doing cold showers, yeah, yeah. still doing cold showers every morning or all the time. That's the only shower you take. Every yeah, it's the only shower I take for the most part. I think very rarely now, and it's great. Now I'm just used to it. And it was again, it was micro dosing mental strength. Can you uh, do things that scare you slowly, steadily, and teach your body that you know Seneca says. Hmm. Your body must be reminded that it is a slave to the mind, uh, and it's also functional. Showers are so much shorter, mm. <laughs> not waiting for the warmth, mm. not enjoying it so much. But it doesn't like phase me anymore. Yeah. And I've done it in like cold environments. I've done sauna to cold shower, like freezing cold shower, and mm. it's like, oh, now I can do this. Mm. Crazy. What else can I do? Yeah. So we slowly and steadily discover all of that. And the second part is that at no point are you seeing that this is how I do things. This is how I think. you're open to being curious about trying different ways of doing things almost not just experimenting with something which is like a cold shower versus a hot shower but also you're saying okay i look at business certain way i look at relationships certain way does the fact that you're you're open to like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks what works for you which i've seen that you do a lot and and you take learnings from those and move ahead has that been a always the method of doing things cuz Not sure. Um, I've slowly, slowly built to it for sure. Mm. Right? Okay. You know, like I'm when I I I I'm trying to adopt. Um, okay. So there's. I did an interview a few months ago with someone writing a book on ambition, and mm. she, this woman just got like deep in my head. Mm. Right. Um, about where it comes from, and it was a very clear. Okay, I have a very clear picture, of who I am, who I want to be. and who you want to be and being that person is a journey of patience of adopting values deciding to adopt them and then waiting for that opportunity so at the end of the day we're 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 like we're beings of our surroundings right so i have to wait and manifest the surroundings or put myself in a surrounding to display said values so there are theories that i learn and i'm like oh that's a good one right for example this from ryan holiday right talking about how seneca says that Uh, you know your body is a slave to the mind and must be reminded that so when you turn your cold shower or and now that started reflecting other parts of my life when things are stressful i'm like you know remind myself that that i'm still in control and you know that i can go through this tough time like a cold shower and just take it head on and continue working and so one of them was feedback loops i heard i think kunal shah talk about you know early days when i became a big fan of his work and his work being his business building but then also how he speaks and his mm. thought process and um, one of them was you know the value of reiteration and how progress is made then i say this so much if you are a friend of mine you've probably heard me say this to you at some point you know solicited unsolicited i've said it to you as advice i'm slowly compounding values into eventually being this person and this image that i have of myself in the future which would always be 10 years next it's like when um What is that actor, McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey mm. said, "Right, he said, 'Who do you want to be when you were 10?' It's like me when I'm 20. And who do you want to be at 20? Me when I'm 30. And and, I, and I'm, I'm going to constantly change. And that keeps changing. Every time yeah. I meet someone who's interesting, I'm like, 'Okay, this is. I want to add this. So I meet this one. Okay, I want to add this from here. My dad, this, this one, this, this one, this. And I'm mixing and matching. And there's this human being that is me in the future that I'm chasing. You know, is I'll meet people of." you know great wealth and see habits that they have and i'm like oh, wow i want to have these habits and i mean people with no wealth who have incredible habits you know sometimes uh regardless agnostic of the wealth let's say you know there's friends of mine who sometimes oh they don't care about this so they do care about this and i'm like that's so interesting and i want to adopt that and i'm very shameless about it and i think you know it's i'm when i'm asked why do you do why do you why do you wear the same clothes every day steve jobs did it quickest way to be successful is to imitate habits of successful people screw it i'm copying him yes i'm copying him it's fine whether i am or no it's okay who cares bol do i don't really it, it is what it is you know and and i'm very shamelessly copying a lot of people every day you know i'm not everyone is copying people I mean, why do i do it it's fine copying law i'm copying all the things from you copying all the things from several people and i'm building this person who i want to be and those values i'm waiting for opportunities to display them you know when i think of thoughts that are interesting i have to wait to be invited to a podcast so i can organically display it and be like wow he's a thought leader you know these are his thoughts he thinks like this amazing it's like cuz i watch kunal shah one speak and i'm like wow so on a speak like this <laughs> does referencing people and i, I, I want to reference just like 
like you said, you, you're picking pieces from people, right? Um, you're almost creating like a scrapbook and saying, this is, put this whole thing together, this formula is going to be building towards who I'll become. Yeah. Does it lead you down like imposter syndrome ever? Haan, I don't think it's related, but there is a lot of imposter syndrome in life because of the messy part of places where I don't have that clarity. I'm like, oh, I don't really deserve this front end because I'm good at front end. I'm an excellent speaker. If I had objectively built this business, you know, to the numbers that we had or whatever, I probably wouldn't have the network I do today. I have that network because of a separate skill. I'm good with people. I'm good with talking to people. I'm good at selling my vision. And so sometimes I feel like what I've actually done is not getting me this. You know, for example, like, if I had built a Paragon Chappal business to the scale I'm at today, nobody would care. So, Chappal is not a Chappal, it's not a Chappal, it's nothing. But Paragon is where it is and everybody you meet someone who started Paragon, you don't know his name, but you meet him like, like you know, touch his feet or something. Because <laughs> he's built such a massive business, yeah. you know. So, so that imposter syndrome, I don't know if it's imposter syndrome, I would also call that in some sense self-awareness. Hmm. Okay, you've not really come so far also, people are nice. People are really nice, you've built a business that's cool and you know, Tanmay says to me, you have liquidity of cool. Hmm. You know, That's so your network is not is going true. anywhere. You will have access to people because you really have lots of liquidity of cool. Because I'm surrounded by the cool things. I, in theory, have access to the cool things that other people want. Which in my head was like, that wasn't hard to build. <laughs> That's not what we have. <laughs> so like, we have too much money. It is available in the free market. I don't know why, but it is true. So, you know, sometimes it's impossible to someone else's awareness. That, okay, I'm not really, we should keep in mind numbers on Neetna right now. That's great how far we've come. Congratulations. Tap myself mm -hmm. on the back. Pat myself on the back. But we have to still do lots more. So, you know, you're invited here because I was smart with being friends with you. <laughs> I was smart to slide in your DM and I can have some advice from you and then getting on a call with you and, you know, chasing you. I think I chased you a week and a half to get 15 minutes on phone with you the first time. And then followed up with this and then meeting just like that and then meeting when we were raising and then being diligent about that and okay good i did a good job there you know very well done very nice congrats but at the same time there's a lot more to do you know sometime back you you spoke about the advice you got from someone when you were at that point i want to ask you what's the best piece of advice you ever gotten don't take everyone's advice <laughs> it'll cancel so itself true. out so true yeah i don't know if that's the best but one of the best amongst hundreds of others today also you know i got some excellent advice Hmm. from who I was with earlier it was just you know about such a nice guy who just gave me this I'd invest in you it's hmm. like it's a problem you're solving that big you need to show that you need to know that oh, you're in. like it's like he reminded me that you say you know investors clear they're putting you so much such a small percentage they believe in you they're like what a great guy it's impressive I was like wow so sweet but it's like you are incredibly impressive but do you know how big the problem you're solving is because you clearly want to build X. And he said, I believe you'll do something or the other and you build that size. He said, you need to know how big that pie is. If you're putting your everything in it. So why are you convincing investors? Are you really convinced of the size? Because we're building in an aftermarket, right? The data is very scarce. So he said, you need to spend more time discovering that. And he was nice enough to commit more time to me. You know, today I only got 30 minutes. And it's like, wow. And these are the things that always take me back to... I don't have a billion dollar business yet, but I have access to people like this and it's like wild that he's telling me that he's heard nice things and so on and so forth. You know, he's giving me this sort of confidence in myself again, which is like, cool, 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 cool. Thank you. A couple of the questions I asked towards the end of every episode, right? What's a relaxed day for you or what's a day when you've taken a pause like for you? I try to do nothing sometimes. Chill kick back uh, every day of my life my pause happens every day so i adopted a i adopted a routine called morning pages from a book called the artist's way by julia cameron uh, it's a book on discover discovering the artist within everybody and in my head it was like you know i used to be a creative person as a kid and i've suppressed a lot of that being like oh i can only hire creative so i want to find that again and um, a practice mentioned, recommended in the book for the course, the 12 week course of the book that it is, was something known as morning pages. It's a brain dump. First thing in the morning, dump all thoughts to write three pages. And I started trying this in Feb um, and it was scanty in March a little more and then April became every day and I would sometimes be like, okay, April had to do every day means every day. So even if I have to go back a day or two, if I didn't write yesterday, just couldn't get myself to, I'll write today for yesterday and I'll write today. It's two batches. And then I made it a thousand words minimum. And now it's at a stage where every single day without fail, I do north of a thousand words without fail. And this is a daily pause for me. Like it's hard sometimes, sometimes it's so flowy, but it is a daily pause. It has changed my life for good. And you know, just 
only read about 30% of that book i picked up on this and i've just it's given me such a lovely space to every day in an organized manner put my thoughts down sometimes gibberish sometimes you know after a meeting like this i'll coerce my thoughts i'll put them together i'll talk about my day i'll talk about relationships it's very private but it's done so much for um settling my mind giving me perspective helping me get over so much it's incredible and that's basically i think what my pause looks like i would recommend it to the world mm. uh it might not be for everybody but mm. my god change my life and the question we start to ask at the end of every episode is what's a song that lifts your mood jesus walks by kanye all mm. falls down by kanye good morning by kanye touch the sky by kanye <laughs> stronger by kanye power by kanye <laughs> I thought about killing you by Kanye. <laughs> Violent crimes by I love Kanye West music. And then I was listening to Roar by Katy Perry. My music is so funny. If I show you my playlist you will laugh so much. Like I was at a dhol function in Delhi the other day and the mothers were dancing to Sena Sena from Bluff Master. I pulled up my phone I was like yo this is on my playlist I was just reading yesterday. <laughs> like it's literally that diverse. I will be listening to old Kanye then I'll be listening to some new Drake and 21 Savage. Then there's um uh there's a song from an old aishwarya rai movie there is something from lagan there is 2002 justin timberlake it's so funny and all in one playlist <laughs> all it's uh, it's my back to back yeah. i'd love to run you through it like i'll jerry show you this hum tum ka sound <laughs> and literally just pop in my head that flute tune i'm like oh, i got to listen to this again i'll mm-hmm. put it up and i'm just listening to it it's it's great you know sometimes i listen to real and like it's a good song you know they up. say that you learn a lot about a person by looking at the playlist they listen to ADHD this is this is, uh, this is as uh, as, as this odd is my diagnosis as, as this is so much ADHD in front of you and then when i like a new song no the world around me is like condemned to listen to it non stop and everybody is like shit like i've seen my driver get mad sometimes like are fir se it's so funny it's so 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 funny and i'm very unabashed about it i was sunna to sunna till i remember it by the back of my hand then he old song all falls down by kanye i'm scratching my hand i know it by the back of my hand i can recite it for you like poetry it's so good thanks so much for doing this man this has hey, been fabulous it's a um, i feel this would have to be one of the most cuz you and i had have had long conversation this has to be one of the most free feeling yeah no old yeah. bard i told you i came Check. loaded <laughs> came loaded and and, and it kind of showed like i was just i was doing pages on the way you know so i was just, i was rehearsing i was getting into the grind for it but thank you for doing this